we'll move on to text messaging. See a new text message just arrived. Tap there and I can get into the conversation view. Now everything's in the same highlight color as the rest of the system, both inbound messages and messages you sent. Uh, they are left justified and right justified to set it off though, but I think uh, I could do better with different colors. Messages on the left are inbound messages from other people, and the replies you send are on the right. Again, you see uh, we have the normal virtual keyboard here, also works in landscape mode. And send it off. Go back into the messaging app, you can see a nice view of all the different text messages that came in. Long press on that, and nothing happens. Uh, it's one of the things that kind of bothers me. It's hard to tell when something, a function like that, will work. You know, it doesn't work here in the messaging conversations, it does work in pictures, it does work in people. So, not sure what the logic is behind that. We're back in the inbox for messaging, and you can tell that this message is unread because it's highlighted in red text as opposed to gray. I'm going to tap on it so you can see some of the things you can do from within a method message. Uh, not just a messaging application, but just about anywhere, email, things like that. You tap on an address, and it will automatically bring up Bing Maps. Phone number. So you can either call it or text it. And of course, a regular web URL will pull up the browser. That functionality also works in email. And I'm speaking of which, I'm going to show you the email client. This is a Gmail account. Bunch of new messages here. You see there's no threaded Gmail messaging. Show you the document support. I have attachments, of course, and you know I've already showed you the documents, but you can just easily launch them right from an email message. Landscape support. I believe there's also. Uh, formatting in one of these messages. There you go. You can also see that it has full HTML support. Underlines, green text, uh, bold, all that kind of stuff. One of the things, and you'll see this in the browser as well, when it zooms text it doesn't reflow it. So while you can zoom in closer, you can't actually read it all, all the time. Menu here for, you know, you can toggle the flag, mark it on red, move between messages and before I delete though I'm going to show you a much cooler way of doing that if you tap on the left hand edge of the subject it automatically pulls up check boxes and marks messages now notice that when I tap on the left to right edge you know when I tap on the left edge here it actually pushes in a bit rotates the text if you can see it's kind of subtle but it's a really cool visual effect. In any case, I can select multiple messages here and then quickly delete them without any kind of confirmation. You can do the same thing for marking messages on red, for example. It's good folder support. Uh, works, works well with uh, Exchange as well. And you can actually have Exchange folders synchronize so it'll show you real time when you look up here whether or not you have new messages in them uh, but you will not get notifications for new messages unless they go into the main inbox which is kind of a problem if you have server-side filters set up in exchange you know maybe like I do when you get a lot of different messages from different people you can have them go into different folders that won't work very well for you because you only ever get notified of stuff that comes into the inbox easily sweep left and right to get the different views unread just flag messages I don't have any but of course I could quickly flag one for you 
and now you can see I do have a flag message and no urgent messages because I'm just not that important. I'm going to take a look at the calendar application. You can see right here at the bottom of the lock screen it just says there's a conference call tomorrow. Always shows you your next meeting down there. Here you can see sales meeting, conference room, and it's tomorrow at 10 a.m. i tap on that. That'll bring up the day view here. And you can see we have multicolored calendars. Uh, this one, depending on the color, says where it's from. If I go into settings, you can see that the Outlook, my Exchange account, are in orange, and Google Calendar appointments are in blue. Teal is for Windows Live. I don't have any appointments set up in that right now. If I swipe over, I can get to the agenda view. Again, color coded. And you'll notice up here at the top it says Monday, October 18th. As I scroll down through the agenda, it changes to keep up with whatever day is currently being shown in the agenda. It's pretty cool. Tap here for the month view. You can swipe up and down. And if I pull in tightly, you can see that the text is actually in there describing all the appointments. So if I tap on the 18th, it takes us right back to where we were. I can get to a different day just by tapping on it. One feature that I really like is if you're running late for an appointment, say uh, I'll type on speech here, notice down at the bottom of the screen is a little icon of the guy running. That means you're running late. So by tapping on that button, I can quickly email the event organizer or other participants and tell them why I'm running late for the appointment, which is pretty slick. And of course, just like in messages, you know, any kind of addresses or things in there in the appointment will link to the appropriate application like Maps or the web browser. This is the event editor, and I'm going in here just so I can show you one of the cool user interface touches. You'll see this is the time. I grab on this. It's how you change the time. Say I wanted to make it uh, 10 after instead of a quarter after. It's just really a nice intuitive way for editing the time or uh, you know, date function works the same, same way. Here's the web browser. We're showing the mobile version of mobileburn.com. Back button is used to go back to the previous screen. Prior screen, I had the full version of Mobile Burn loaded just so you can see what it looks like. You can see, even though it's not done loading yet, it's still fully interactive, which is kind of cool. Multi touch zooming does a fine job of rendering, everything looks really good. Also works in landscape mode. One thing you'll notice though is it doesn't reflow text when you zoom in tightly so, uh, like the Android and iPhone browsers do. Uh, Microsoft has said it's trying to preserve the layout and sometimes trying to preserve the layout means that certain things get made larger when they shouldn't be, certain things smaller when they sh shouldn't be. It doesn't always work out but in general the browser seems to work quite well and it's very fast. You only get to the controls for things like uh, adding a new bookmark when you're in portrait mode or favors as they're called. Swipe over to get to history. I'll show you a problem here. I'm going to jump out to start screen. I'll go back to IE. And there's a forward button. It's grayed out now because there's nowhere to go. There's no back feature. And if I hit the back button, even though there was a previous page, it's going to take me to the start screen. Uh, so without a back button or something in the browser, you're going to run into this problem. And you're going to, maybe you've gone through a whole bunch of pages and you want to get back. There's really no easy way to do so. You're going to have to go back in the history or reload the pages. Go back to the menu here and I'll do find on page. So you can see I can search on, say, Apple. And keep searching for Apple, all the different mentions, kind of cool. Multiple windows support. Microsoft calls them tabs, but since there are no actual tabs, I'm going to call it multiple windows. You can easily kill off windows too and go back. 
And unfortunately, there is no Silverlight or Adobe Flash support built into this. Uh, I really expected more from the browser in terms of that kind of support. Uh, I assume that that has to be forthcoming. Uh, one last feature here, you can pin to the start page like you can with many things in Windows Phone 7 and you'll notice there it is. And it's smart enough to know that the page is already loaded so it doesn't reload the entire page if you're already there.